All right, welcome everyone viewing on YouTube. So this is our 17th live stream geometry and continuing. Um, so we're not stopping anytime soon. And today I took problems from the Toy Mata Olympiad. So it's a contest in Russia uh, for advanced high school students. I'm not sure if it's just for students in Russia or if anyone from around um, the world can join it, but maybe it's mostly students in Russia. And uh, I try to choose problems that had a fairly simple statement, um, but the problems all look fairly difficult. So uh, let's see how many we can get through today. Uh, so I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, hold on just a second. Here we go. You guys all see it? All right. So here's the first problem. Um, one sec, there we go. So we have a triangle, so this is in 2019. Uh, we have a triangle ABC where angle uh, B is obtuse um, and AB is not equal to BC. Uh, o is the circumcenter. So um, let me draw the circumcircle. And um, all right, there's a circumcenter. N is the midpoint of arc ABC. Uh, so often I like to, yeah, draw the perpendicular bisector like this. N is going to be the midpoint. So obviously, uh, ON is perpendicular to BC. Uh, let me hide that. Uh, the circumcircle of BON uh, intersects AC. Uh, let me find the, the circumcircle tool here. Uh, it intersects AC at X and Y. All right. And then we, we see where BX and BY meet the circumcircle of ABC. All right. Uh, and we call it, um, let me just make this look nicer. We call it P and Q. All right. All right, so that's P, and that's Q, and uh, then we want to show PQ and the reflection of N with respect to line AC, so we'll call that N prime. Uh, we want to show that PQ and N prime are collinear. Interesting. Was a little. Hmm. So I'm going to draw the segment through N O and N prime. Maybe that would help. But yeah, these circles aren't homothetic. If, if they were, that would mean P Q is parallel to X Y. I wonder if P X Y Q is cyclic. Uh, I don't think it is. No. Okay, so angle B O N is is twice angle B Q N and B P N. Um so we, we know B O N is isosceles. So if, if BON is, is uh, 2X, then BNO is 90 minus X, and BPN is X. Uh, let's see. So PX equals XN, and YQ equals y, YN equals YQ. 
uh, is that. Um, that's interesting. How did you get that? Is that congruent triangles or um, or angle? Ch I think angle chase. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whenever I see like an isosceles triangle, I, I feel like I've seen this on my channel. Like I think I did this in the last live stream. Like if you have like an isosceles triangle and you take the circumcircle, when you do like angle chases, you get like another isosceles triangle. Uh, it's interesting. So. So yeah, so PX equals XN and um, YQ equals YN. So maybe those triangles are congruent, PXN and YQN. Uh, no, uh, I don't think that, I don't think they're congruent um, because yeah, PN doesn't equal NQ, but that feels like it, it has to help that information, right? Um, so, yeah, so if PX equals XN, there's like a symmetry about the figure, right? Um, so angle PXO equals angle OXN. And, and um, yeah, it feels like from here we're very close to solving the problem, I feel like. Um, so, so let me, okay, so this is like a reflection, right? Um, I'm just gonna draw those in. So the triangle PXO is congruent to triangle NXO, right? And triangle OQY is congruent to triangle ONY and it almost hmm, is so. So P X O N is cyclic. I think um, I think we can deduce that from an angle chase that P X O N is cyclic or P X O N prime. And then it's probably an angle chase to show that these are collinear, right? Um, because P N prime O is equal to angle B X O. Um, which is, yeah, then it's an angle chase. Ah, that was fast. This is uh, faster than I thought. Okay, so I'm gonna type it up for the viewers on YouTube. Um, but yeah, we solved that one fast. Uh, just a couple minutes in. Nice. All right. So, eight minutes. Yep. <laughs> so I'm gonna delete all the extra lines we added in. Um, And then I'm going to add them in as I do the proof. Uh, but yeah, whenever you have like the circumcircle, whenever you have a circle passing through the center of another circle, you always get like through an angle chase. I feel like there's often isosceles triangles like that. Um, so yeah, just something to recognize. All right. Okay, so I'll start with this. All right. Um, now I'll do the angle chase. Um, okay, so we have angle X, XPN is, is BPN, uh, which is half of BON. Um, oh. Which is, which is half of BON, which is half of BXN, okay. So uh, I'm actually gonna write it out a little differently. So, so angle uh, BXN equals um, angle BON, which is equal to twice angle BPN, which is equal to twice angle XPN. And so that means uh, triangle XPN is isosceles. Let's see. Hmm. I thought we did because isosceles triangles help us show that triangle XON is congruent to triangle OXP. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe like we could phrase it differently so that we don't need it. Um,
Oh, PX. Oh, we can show their cyclic in a different way. Xn prime D is equal to Xn D. XBO. Yeah, okay, so we can get around the isosceles triangles. So, so, so I'll do it the way uh, you just mentioned, um, because why not? Simplest is the best. So angle X N prime, uh, angle X N prime O is equal to uh, angle X N O, which is equal to angle X B O, uh, which is equal to angle O P X. Um, so X O N prime P is cyclic. And then, uh, so I'm going to draw that in. And then similarly, Y O N prime Q is cyclic. All right. And so let's draw that in. And now an angle chase pretty much does it because, um, or Mikel's theorem. You could say like the converse of Mikel's theorem. Um, I'm just going to do the angle chase. So we have angle uh, P n prime O is equal to angle O x B, which is equal to angle O y Q, which is 180 minus angle O n prime Q. So we're using all those cyclic quadrilaterals. And so that means that P n prime and Q are collinear. And that basically solves the problem. Um, uh, that's exactly basically what the problem asks for. So uh, we're done. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next one. Thanks everyone for your help and uh, yeah, we didn't have to use that isosceles triangle, which is kind of interesting. All right, so this one looks really kind of interesting. Um, so we have a, a cyclic quadrilateral with perpendicular diagonals. Um, so A, B, C, D. I feel like there is a one problem I did on my channel. I think it was like the China Northeastern Math Olympiad where we had like a cyclic quadrilateral with perpendicular diagonals. Um, all right. So I think this problem will probably take a little bit more room. Um, all right. Let me hide that. Oh, actually, I want to keep the line BD for now. Um, the tangents at A and C, the circle, and the line BD form a triangle, all right? Um, one second. So how do I draw this so that that triangle is not super big? Um, it almost looks like an isosceles triangle. Is it this triangle right here? We'll call it EFG. I think it might be isosceles. Yeah, it is. Uh, oh, we have to draw the center of that circle. So um, O is the center of C. And basically, uh, let me draw the circumcircle here. We're saying the circles, the circumcircles of BOD and this triangle FGE are tangent. That's what we want to prove. So I've drawn it. It looks like they're tangent, but we have to prove it. Uh, so let me hide a couple things. Um, so that's that. And uh, 
I see someone put something in the chat. So yeah, I think it's not hard to show FGE as isosceles. Um, are they similar? Uh, FGE and BOV. I don't think FGE and BOV are similar, but maybe you had a different triangle in mind. Um, let me uh, move this over a little bit. Just make some more room. So yeah, again, we have like a, a circle through a center of another circle. And so, yeah, maybe the angle chase, look at this isosceles triangles, just like the last rub. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. So BO, so BO is equal to OD is equal to OC. Maybe it's worth drawing the center of that bigger circle. So center of E. Uh, I'm going to try something. I wonder if EI and H now, they're not collinear. Uh, and I don't think HI is parallel to FC, but I'm just going to play around. Yeah, it's not. Uh, one sec, guys. I'll be right back. All right, let's see. So how do we show their tangent? I'm gonna draw the center of, of, of circle BOD. Um, there we go. Yeah, it's tricky showing circles are tangent to each other. Like sometimes you could show there's a homothety that takes one circle to the other. Um, do we have any good homotheties here? Let's check. Hmm. Let, let me try this one. So if I yeah, so it looks like Fi and Oh are concurrent on the circle. Um, of course, GeoGebra is helping me a little bit there, but uh, it certainly looks like Fi and Oh are uh, concurrent on that circle. So can we, um, is there a way we can show that? So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the line OH, and I'm gonna let it meet the circle at a at a point um, K, and OK is is parallel to AC. Um, if I could show FI, I mean we don't know I exists really yet, right? Because we don't know that the circles are tangent. Um, so I mean. One thing I could do is I could like erase this circle and I could just let FK meet the circle at a point. Um, that might be the best way to do this. Yeah, so I'm going to delete this circle and I'm gonna let FK um, meet the circle at a point I, and I wanna show F 
EIG is cyclic. And then not only that it's cyclic, but it's also tangent. Um, all right. So I guess first step is showing that it's cyclic. I'm not sure how you would have seen, well, I guess even without GeoGebra, there's, you, you might've been able to guess that. Um, so what do we want to do? How do we want to show it's cyclic? Um, what kind of an angle chase? Angle FEG is equal to angle FIG or? Hmm. Power of a point. See. Yeah, what's the best strategy there? What angles can we use to show that that's cyclic? So FEG is isosceles, like we mentioned. So maybe that'll help. Um, and and that should that should just be an angle chase to show that FEG is isosceles. Uh, so yeah, I'm thinking how that would work. Uh, how about FIE? I was just thinking that right before you wrote it. Is FIE isosceles? Uh, no. It almost looks like it, but um, not quite. So yeah, there's there's a couple ways to show something cyclic. We can try an angle chase. Uh, I'm not sure as of right now how to do that. Um, although it doesn't mean it's impossible. We can use power of a point or we can try to find a fifth point that lies on that circle. So we have to use that FC as tangent, right? Um, I wonder if, uh, no, I don't think this is true. Um, but yeah, I was gonna say like, if DJ passed through F, but yeah, no, that's not true. So let, let me draw in that circle. We don't know it exists yet, but I think if I draw it, it might help. So the, the tangent at F passes through O, right? So maybe it's worth drawing OF. So OF is tangent to that circle if uh, once we know it exists. Um, is BI tangent to it? No, because B, B I is going to intersect it in another point, I think. Uh, yeah. I want to use power of a point. I'm not sure if it's that easy.
So, I mean, basically, if we if we did something like this, uh, that would mean that KJL would be um, isosceles, right? Maybe we could say something about J and L. Uh, J, C, and O look collinear. <laughs> look, look, look at how much GeoGebra helps. So, yeah, okay. So I think that kind of tells us a lot. Okay, so I kind of cheated with GeoGebra, but I think J, C, and O are collinear and A, O, and L are collinear. <laughs> Thank goodness for GeoGebra helping us, right? So, uh, Wait, what did I just do? I'm sorry, I forgot. So, A, I connect A to O and, um, whoops. A to O and C to O, that's what I do. Okay. So, if I draw A O and C O, um, they're gonna meet this circle at two points, uh, J and L. All right, let's erase some stuff. And, whoops. It, and then basically I wanna show that, so we know by symmetry JKL is isosceles. And basically I wanna show a homophony about I takes JKL to FEG. We know they're both isosceles. Uh, we could probably show by an angle chase that they're similar. So, interesting. I wanna show G, I, and J are collinear and E, I, and L are collinear. It, it is an angle chase, I believe you. So how, how do we do that angle chase? Let's see. Well, I mean, all the sides are parallel, right? So um, so, so angle, we don't know, or, or I define J to be the intersection of OC with the circle. So I said, let OC meet the circle at J, yeah. So uh, basically we wanna show JKL and EFG are homothetic about I. Um, so how do we do that? That's the same as showing that GI and J are collinear or that EI and L are collinear. Uh, if we could show one of those are collinear by, by the same argument, I think we could show the other. I think that would solve the problem. Um, so yeah, how do we show that? Or, okay, to show they're homothetic, if we could show Fi over Ik, is equal to the similarity ratio of those two triangles, that would, that would prove it. Yeah, so what is Fi over Ik? Um, so by power of a point, we know Fi times Fk is Fo squared. Um, Yeah, we, we know the triangles are R homothetic. We can show by, hey, Rodrigo, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, so, whoops, sorry. So we know that the two triangles EFG and JKL are homothetic because they're similar and, and uh, their sides are parallel. We just have to show I is the point of homophony. Um, that would solve the problem.
Hmm. Seems like there should be a trick here. So yeah, if we could show fi over ik uh, is equal to fg over jk, um, feels doable. Let's see. So if we look at like triangle FOK, that's a right triangle. And OI is the altitude of the hypotenuse. So FI over IK is like the ratio of um, those two sec parts of the hypotenuse. Um, let's see. Yeah, is there a way we could find EG over JL? It's kind of brainstorming here. EG over JL. So I guess by power of a point, we have uh, GI times GJ is GB times GB, which is GC squared. Or, or we would have that if we knew those were collinear. I wonder if, is BI parallel to OJ? Uh, I think it might be, and that might make the, no, it's not. Ah, uh, that's all right. Uh, thanks for joining, Hakan. Um, see, see you next time. So, all right. So, right, it looks like there should be a way to show these triangles are homothetic, right, at, at I. Uh, hmm. Is there another triangle that these are both similar to? Uh, the Mikel point of FGAX, where X is. Um, yeah, so if we if we let X be the intersection of the diagonals, like you said, um, I. I would be the Mikkel point of that quadrilateral. Does that finish the problem? I think it might. Because we'd have that, 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 and that. <laughs> that, that. That just looks like it has to solve the problem, right? Too many circles. Yeah. They are hard to find, but uh, I think that should probably do it. Um, so which we just have to show one of those. Well, we have to show two of the circles intersect at that point, and then it follows that FGIE would be cyclic. Um, so uh, can we show AX? 
Yeah, how would we prove that's the McKell point? So one of those circles, so um, it, the circle AF through AFO and C, uh, can we show that passes through I? Uh, that seems like that might just be an angle chase. Um, let's see. So we know AFOC is cyclic. Um, Can we show angle FIC is 180 minus angle FAC? Or, uh, yeah, ICA. Can we show it's 180 minus FAC? Yeah, basically, we want to show that the McKell point lies on this circle. Um, is O, X, and I collinear? Uh, good point. The, it does look collinear. Yes. I did not notice that. We have a lot of collinear points here. Let me think how we would show that. So I wonder if X is the midpoint of OI. Let's check. No. Yeah, how do we show their collinear? Is it like Ricard? Well, so OI is the perpendicular to the hypotenuse of in triangle OFK. Um, I think that's just an angle chase. Yeah, but we can show using just an angle chase that O, X, and I are collinear because basically, like if we label this point, triangle OXM is similar to triangle OKI. Um, and so, yeah, OX and I have to be collinear. And then is it just really an angle chase? Um, because once we know that, So, yeah, we just have to show that this point I is on one of those circles. There's so many of them. We could show it's on, oh, maybe we could show angle OIC is angle OAC. I think that might do it. Ah, uh, Rodrigo, you're the last one left. Thanks for sticking around. Um, 
I guess a lot of people had to go. Um, but um, I mean, basically we want to show angle OIC. Oh, Amal's back on. Maybe he lost the connection. Um, so, I mean, it, it seems like we should be able to show angle OIC is equal to angle OCX. Like, it, so, let's see, angle OIC, uh, Yeah, but basically, if we can show triangle, if we can show IC squared as IO uh, times IX or IX times IO, um, it feels like poles and polars, doesn't it? Because X lies on the polar of F, so F lies on the polar of X. Yeah, now that solves it. I, I think I found another solution, though. I'm going to type up my solution. So um, basically, X lies on the polar of F. And so F has to lie on the polar of X, um, which um, is FK. Um, I think that, that should be able, that sh you should be able to show that pretty easy because, because yeah, because OX uh, times OI um, is equal to OM times OK, which uh, is equal to OB squared. Yeah. So, um, so, oh, but, yeah, what was I thinking? The circums, oh yeah, so, I wanted to show that IC squared is IX times IO. Um, or wait, no, if, if I'm sorry, OC squared is OX times OI. Yeah, that, that, that solves it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, OC squared is OB squared, which is OM times OK, which is OX times OI. Yeah, OK, so I'm, I'm going to write this up. All right. So let me delete some of the extra stuff I added. So. I added a lot here, I feel like. I'm gonna have to remember the whole thing. <laughs> All right, so. I think that's everything, right? So first I'm gonna say let delta D triangle uh, EFG is shown. Okay. And let H be the circumcenter of BOD. Whoops.
Okay. And let A, C, and D be me to X. All right. And so I'm gonna draw that in. Whoops. Ah, sorry about that. So that's point X. All right. And let OH meet the circumcircle. Hey, where'd that go? This might take a little while to write up, but I'll try to do it as fast as I can. Um, and then I'll, I'll let OH, I wanna draw OH, AO, and CO. So All right. Okay. So let AO um, CO and HO meet. Uh, the circle BOD at I, J, K. Okay, and then, yeah, where, where did I, what did I do from there? Um, I actually forgot. So I think I said like, let FK meet the circle at a point. Yeah, so where's my, uh, so let FK meet the circle at L. Oh, sorry. And then uh, now we're going to show that F, E, E, F, G, and J, K, I are homothetic um, about L. All right. Um, so we're going to try to show L is the Mikel point of A, F, G, X, as Ann Mall mentioned. Um, so first I'm going to show O, X, and L are collinear. Um, but that is, is not a hard angle chase because um, angle X, O, L, angle X, O, K, um, yeah, I, why did I think that was obvious? So if X lies on the polar of F, then F lies on the polar of X. Um, Yeah, so I think I think that sort of explains why. Wait, hold on a sec. I thought it was obvious why O X and L are collinear, but now I'm actually wondering. So Let's see, X lies on the polar of F. So F lies on the polar of X. Um, so if we, if we drew the,
Yeah, so. Uh, the, yeah, it seems like it shouldn't be that hard to show OX and LR collinear. I'm trying to think how to do it. So angle So angle XOK is 90 minus OXD, which is 90 minus FOX. Um, Now, what was I thinking here? Can we use Burkhard's to show OX and L are collinear? So are, are KB and KD tangent to the circle? Yes, because angle ODK is 90 and angle OKBO is 90. So the tangents at F are A and C and the tangents at K are B and D. Um, so I mean, from there, it feels like it should follow Yeah, maybe we can even take a shortcut here. So well, yeah. Oh, so FLCOA has to be cyclic easily because angle FLO is 90 and angle FCA and FAO are 90. So maybe it's really maybe it's much easier than I'm, I'm making it. So I uh, I think it is. So we have uh Angle FLO equals uh, 180 minus angle OLK, OLK equals 90, um, which is equal to angle FCO equal to angle FAO. All right, so yeah, no poles and poles. I don't think we need poles and polars or any of that. So FAOCL is cyclic. All right, so I'm gonna, and then we can use all the Mikkel stuff, I think. Uh, or do we need one more? I think we need like one more cyclic quadrilateral, right? So can we show GLCX is cyclic? Um, Let's see. Or or A E L X, maybe we could show that cyclic. Kind of like A E L X. I mean, if we can show O X and L are collinear, I think that would do it. Um, Hmm. Interesting. Let's 
So could we show angle ELA is 90? Yeah, maybe we don't even need J and I. I don't know if we do. Well, yeah, I'm just trying to, I just need to show one of those are cyclic. So we showed, we can either show GXCL as cyclic. Um, you got it? Uh, I think you mean LX and O, right? How do we show LX and O are collinear? LO bisects angle ALC. Ah. And angle LX, so that makes sense. Um, but um, does that mean that, yeah, how do we know LX bisects? Uh, let's see. Yeah, it feels like there's got to be a way to show one of these circles is cyclic. Um, there's just too many of them. So. We could try to show angle GLC is 90. So, we could try to show angle GL. Hmm. GLO equals CLK. That doesn't seem easy to show. Um. In a sec, I'll be right back. Okay, let's see. What's another circle we can show? Yeah. Yeah, OX and L is collinear would solve it. And that, that feels like, um, that feels like it has to be a consequence of the fact that, like, so X lies on the polar of both F, uh, F and K. So X, F is the polar of 
Yeah, this is just poles and polars. Okay, so um, so X lies on the polar of both F and K. Well, I'll just say with respect to the circle O. So, so that means um, FK is the polar of X, right? And once we know that, um, since OL is perpendicular to FK, that means OX and L are collinear. Yeah, and so once we have that, um, now we're very close to solving it. Um, so that means uh, I keep forgetting what I did before, but I, I mean, basically, I, we could use an angle chase to show that that this is cyclic because um, angle CLO, or, or yeah, what, what was I thinking? So, so angle CLO is equal to angle CAO is equal to angle XCO. Um, and, and I think it's, yeah, we can show angle XCO is equal to angle CGX. Um, yeah, okay. So Actually, did we even need? Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna write it out. So angle CLX is equal to angle uh, CLO, which is equal to angle uh, e CBO which is equal to angle XCO. Yeah, that's what I'm sure, yeah. So that, that's what I'm trying to do it, which is, so XCO is 90 minus GCO. Which is equal to angle CGX. Let me see if I wrote that all out correctly. Um, so XCO is 90 minus uh, GCX, which is CGX. So CLXG is cyclic. So S, which means that L is the Mikel point of AFGX. Um, uh, 
and that means that EFGL is cyclic. All right. So I'm going to draw in all those circles. And then now we basically know that a homothety, um, we know it's cyclic. So since, and we can also show fairly easily that EFG and JKI are similar. And so let's, let's see, this one took a whole hour. Yeah. Uh, do, do we need, is, is there a simpler way uh, we can show that they're tangent without having to show those triangles are homothetic. Um, I'm, I'm still kind of wondering if there's a, a, a better way. So right, because we're using the fact that um, Yeah, no, I, I think that's easy enough. We'll just write it out. So EF is perpendicular to AI, which is perpendicular to IK. So we have we have EF is perpendicular to AI, and IK is perpendicular to AI. So uh, EF is parallel to IK. And then similarly, um, FG is parallel to JK. And then, um, Kind of how I'm thinking about it. Let's see, and, and, and then also uh, EG is parallel to um, JI. So so that means uh, EFG and JKI are homothetic. Are homothetic at L. And that implies um, the circles DOD and delta are tangent at L. All right. All right. So that was a tricky one. So now I will move on to the next one. But yeah, the, the idea of the McKell point is, yeah, crops up a lot. Uh, all right, so next problem. So we have a trapezoid.